me and Matt here, and this is Keller Kyle. Welcome to part two, me and Matt and Killer Kyle, and yeah. Number five. So number five, we're going to talk about a movie that obviously, because I'm a punk rocker, and I really enjoy also mockumentaries and this one is also a Canadian one made in 1996 it's called Hardcore Logo and basically it's about a filmmaker Bruce McDonald following this punk rock band and their journey which it's pretty cool. In the beginning, it's got Joey Ramone and DOA and a lot of different punk bands. Also, you have Hugh Dillon of Headstones playing Joe Dick and Joseph Mulgrew. Yeah. And it's a really good movie. Like, I mean, it, it's... You see these guys hanging out in bars and then they're playing clubs and really being nasty motherfuckers that spit on people and it's just one of the best mockumentaries out there and I think you look at the journey that they go through and the fights that they have too as well and the ending is when Joe Dick is the last person seen on camera and he shoots himself in the head and they just see his lifeless body for a few minutes when people try to scramble to get help for him and that's the end of the movie but it's it's kind of the way of and not just punk rock but rock and roll in general I guess yeah. and even though punk rock is rebellious against rock and roll so I mean it's basically a good it's a good movie to watch anyways and I've seen it more than once a long time ago but I've seen it yeah if you really want to have an understanding of what it's like to be a punk rocker watch that movie <laughs> yeah well I mean that's one of the reasons there's a lot of good mockumentaries out there for rock and hardcore logo and there's another movie years later that I haven't seen it but this punk rock chick is biased by Joe Dick's spirit and I haven't really seen it so I don't know anything about it too much but yeah definitely check hardcore logo out I think you'll like it I mean I loved it yeah. when I saw it and Again, another movie I really want to see, so... Yeah. Again.
for my next choice is a movie that if you're really into the unknown and the afterlife if you will and a really good action movie that takes the imagination and really plays to the advantage of using people's imagination and having people think oh what if this actually was a possibility or is a possibility and whatever uh, the mummy I've seen that in the theater. Yeah, I mean, that was a good movie. Again, there's a scene that's heartbreaking too. But in general, it was a good movie. You have the mummy, and then of course, the mummy returns with the rock. And there was another mummy movie out recently yeah. without Brendan Fraser or the rock. Of course, the Scorpion King, King was yes. like the one that was made into a movie afterwards, but it's a pretty good movie. I mean, when I saw it, again, it's been so long and I don't remember parts. Oh, I don't remember much of it anyways. I saw yeah. it in the theater. I may have seen it on DVD at some point. Definitely something to check out I guess I guess again. so yeah I, I don't know what else to say about that to think that there is an Egyptian god if you will that can control these skeletons of like people that have died to try and get a brass bracelet type thing in a map or whatever is interesting yeah for sure yeah number four so we're gonna go on to another music movie this one was fucking awesome man like it's Again, another one of my favorite genres of heavy metal. And you got Steve Buscemi, Adam Sandler, and Brennan. Again, Brennan Fraser. Yes. The movie I chose and this movie Matt chose are kind of back to back Brendan Fraser movies. Yeah. It's uh, very interesting to see. It's basically these guys who are. Well, metalheads, and they want to be in a band. And Brendan Fraser's character, his girlfriend breaks up. They, he gives her the demo tape that they've made, and she ends up fucking tossing it out the window when she's driving. And it gets run over. A dog comes over and pisses on it. And so he basically. Well, that happens. Him and two other guys hold up the radio station where they want to play the demo tape and get their names heard. And you got Joe Mantegna and fucking Michael McKeon as the guys who are on the station. And the character of Michael McKeon wants to change from a rock station to a soft rock station. Easy listening or whatever. So basically, they hold the two hostage. They've got these fake machine guns. And, yeah, it turns into a fucking party afterwards. And, you know, oh, by the way, the name is Lone Ranger as well. How can it be the Lone Rangers if it was only, like, three? Yeah. So that was pretty interesting. You also got cameos from Lemmy Kilmister of Motorhead. And you've got White Zombie playing in a nightclub. <laughs> you have fucking Chris Farley doing a cameo as well as a security guard. And yeah, it's a pretty, very, it's, it's a very cool movie. It's one of the classic lines. 
who would win in a fight, Lemmy or God? That's a trick question. Lemmy is God. Yeah, exactly. And don't you fucking forget it. So, <laughs> Hands is one of my favorite movies as well. I did see it recently, so... It's, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's, uh... Very cool. Yeah. Uh, a lot of cool metal references, too. <laughs> yeah. But... My next movie is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you want to see a really good movie, basically about dinosaurs and what it would have been, what it'd be like to be at a park that is solely an area for several different dinosaurs is this place and it's a, I really enjoyed it it's a really good movie it's from 94 95 or one and it was Jurassic Park 93 93 okay and I think yeah I'll have to check that again but uh, yeah I remember when this movie was coming out now I obviously was too young to watch it yeah <laughs> But that was a really good movie, actually. And of, co of course, it's another one of those movies where there's like three sequel, or is it three movies after that? But, but well, there's two movies that came after the but, original, yeah. and then there's been like one or two, or like three, I think. Like after, after movie, like movies that came out uh, like years later. Well, yeah, you got Jurassic World with Chris Pratt, and, well, too, actually, there's another one coming out, apparently, but, yeah, I, I think that Jurassic Park, even if I didn't like it back then, is pretty cool. A certain geography, for some reason, speaking of high school, but, yeah, but it's still a pretty good movie at the time. Yeah, Jurassic Park doesn't really seem, to me, doesn't really seem to be the most ideal movie for a geography class. Yeah, I'm not sure what my teacher was smoking. Now, if it was, like, learning about maybe archaeology and, like, wanting to talk about, like, dinosaurs and seeing what dinosaurs would have looked like millions of years ago. You could watch that movie, but I mean, for geography, eh, Yeah. I don't um, know about that one. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, whatever. I mean, it was, yeah. I mean, you got Jeff Goldblum and the guy from Seinfeld, Newman. Wayne yeah. Knight, that's his name. Yeah. That was, you know, that was a good movie. And I think that I'm not sure when the other Jurassic World movies coming out, but I heard that there was going to be another one coming soon. So yeah, I don't know anything about that. Number three. movie definitely jump-started Jim Carrey's career. Ah, yes. He was fresh off of A Living Color. And one of the two movies, well, actually, yeah, one of the two movies in 94 was Dumb and Dumber. Uh -huh. And this movie. Yes. Fucking, actually, no, Batman Returns as well. But this movie... Yeah. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. And, ba you know, following Ace Ventura, who is looking for a dolphin. Yes. And you've got, from what I can recall for myself, the first time I saw Courtney Cox, and shortly after that, Friends came out. So, yes. 
Yeah, it's a pretty cool movie. Obviously, animals, you know, I love animals. And there's a guy who was a football player, and he. They're trying to find him, and basically, he disguises himself as a woman. Which is weird, but there's a scene near the end where Jim Carrey, I guess, they kissed. And so Jim Carrey figures out that this guy is this girl. And he's like, oh, Finkel is Einhard. Einhard is Finkel. Einhard's a man, and I kissed a man. And then he throws up and has a cold shower and... It's a pretty fun, well, it was a funny sequence at the time. Right. But then that followed up with Ace Ventura when Nature Calls. And then they actually had a cartoon after that, too, which <laughs> didn't last very long. But it was a good movie. I really liked it. And again, you know, I should actually dig it up. Or well, not dig it up, I don't have it. But I should watch it again, <laughs> see if I can find it. And there's a cameo by Cannibal Corpse, too, so that was pretty fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, couple scenes that come to my mind with that movie. One is he's in, I think, a restaurant or a hotel or something, and you see him go into the bathroom, and then a little yeah. while later he comes out of the bathroom and he's like, whoo! Whatever you do, do not go in that bathroom. Yeah. And then he is trying to get close up to some rhinos, I think. And he's inside this, like, uh, robotic rhino. And it ends up breaking down and, like, he's all hot and sweaty and he's... So he's got to get out of there, and the only way he can get out of there is climbing out the back of it, and of course, you had all these people standing there watching it, and it's like, Mommy, why is that rhino giving birth to a human or whatever? Really yeah, funny. That's what nature calls. But yeah, they're both very good movies, and I would actually consider tr trying to find them to watch them again. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. I really do enjoy seeing them, and hopefully I can find them so I can watch them again, because I really liked them back when I was a kid. Yeah. So. My next choice is a movie that, if you're into action spy movies, you could say, You'd really like this movie, and I'm actually kind of surprised that the franchise, if you will, is still going. Just recently, I think, within the last year, I think, or so, they come out with a new version of the movie called Rogue One, I believe. It's, but Mission Impossible. Oh, uh, yeah. And I remember when that came out, I think it was 11, and to think, well, A, there was a uh, TV show right, in the 60s, and also, years later, it's still going, and it's like, it's, it's funny how stuff like that happens, though, because... Right, yeah. It's just like with TV shows, you know. The Simpsons came out the year you were born. Yes. And, well, with all fucking controversy, I don't know how long it's going to stay there. But it is the longest cartoon. That's, well, the second or third longest cartoon running. Yeah. So. Yeah, like, with Mission Impossible, the things that you see these guys do and like being able to completely disguise yourself not only visually but like disguise your voice to sound like the person you're trying to 
pretend to be and all the weapons and all the action in it and like stunts in that is really good. I remember I think it's the first movie where Tom Cruise is like on the outside of a train and He's trying to either get inside of it to get at a bad guy or whatever it is, or and somehow there's an explosion in like the train tunnel, and it's like, wow, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Number two. to your left and speaking of cartoons there's I mean obviously I watched a lot of Disney when I was a kid and there's one in particular and because I'm a dog person dog fanatic this movie was very cool and you know you don't really think about the meaning of movies until you're older but all dogs go to heaven and it's it stars the late Burt Reynolds and the late Dom DeLuise. Got his German Shepherd who gets hit by a car, and his friend who plays Dom DeLuise, who plays the dachshund. I don't know if he dies as well. I think he dies as well. His pit bull basically kills them off, and they die. They go to heaven, and they had to go back down to help this little dying girl which for Disney kind of seems ballsy but yeah. at the time I mean that's kind of what you expect maybe so they won't try to get her to get adopted and that eventually happens and then they long story short they end up going to heaven but a very touching movie too like very heavy theme and you know think about that kind of stuff when you're little but yeah you know you're doing you don't but it's still a very good movie and <laughs> you know we keep talking about sequels yeah this one had a sequel and a tv show but yeah very cool Yeah, my next movie is not, well, it's set in, like, medieval times, if you will, but there's also, like, these different mythical creatures in it, and just unique characters, and the storyline and the overall movies are really, really good. And if you're into, let's say, medieval war battle movies with, like, certain things that really will utilize your imagination and play to like maybe your inner child you could say you probably like the movie and the series of movies the lord of the rings yeah i did see the first one yeah. when i was in high school again high school i had a lot of friends who were drama geeks <laughs> and i tried to be one of those and they were all interested in lord of the rings and i thought well It'd be something to watch, you know. Unfortunately, I have a short attention span, so it kind of is. Well, it's a long movie, so true. It's very difficult to follow along and you know try to keep your interest. But it was a good movie nonetheless. Yes. I mean, the first one is the only one that I've seen. Right. I mean, I fucking sat through *Man of Menace* in the theater. 
it got barred halfway through. Right. But, I don't know, I gotta watch Lord of the Rings again. It, you know, it seems, it is a cool movie, so. Yeah. It'd be something that I need to watch. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. And, like, to think, you've got this place called the Shire. Yes. And all the, yeah, like, elves and dwarves and, or a dwarf and just several other character, well, creatures, if you will, in this movie. And it's like, it, it, not only is it about, like, essentially it's about this young, whatever, whatever played by Eliza Wood. And he ends up with this ring, and you put this ring on, you end up going to a completely different dimension or whatever. But the premise is, they basically, basically gotta take this ring back to where it first was initially created, and destroy it, and you've got orcs trying to stop them, and friggin' stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. I think one scene that was pretty powerful is when Frodo was on yeah. the ground, and I don't know if it was Miriam or not. It's like, I can't carry this for you, but I can carry you, and it's like, yeah. friendship, you know. <laughs> yep. So, I gotta get back and watching that again, and trying to keep my attention. But yeah. there it is. So, number one for me is, again, I haven't seen this movie in a long time, but there was a real kick that I was on with this director. Oh, it's Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> yes. Number one. The movie's Desperado. Yes. It's one of, oh, well, there's a sequel, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, and then another one, which was Machete. Yes. And I think I saw that one, actually. I saw, well, I saw three of them, but Desperado. Definitely Antonio Banderas and some hacker in it, and it's a very cool movie. Like it's yeah. in Mexico, and there's a lot of violence, and this, you know Antonio plays a guy who's a mariachi band member, and he carries a gun in his guitar case. It's pretty fucking cool. But there's a scene where. He's in a bar, and there's a big fight, and you have them, um, you know, fighting and shooting on the tables, and he's jumping up on tables and in the chandelier, and it's just, just a really cool fucking choreographed fight that they had. Right. But, like, you know, I was, I guess, on a Robert Rodriguez kick, and really enjoyed watching all his movies, and... Again, I have to start watching them again. Yeah. But, yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. And my number one. But, again, I haven't seen it in a few years. So, definitely something. A lot of these movies that we've mentioned today, well, at least I've mentioned today, I have to definitely start watching again. Yeah. Number one for me is a movie that I mentioned before when Matt and I talked about our top ten-ish favorite comedians. It's another Jim Carrey movie and it's a f few years after uh, Ace Ventura but it's one of those movies that really goes to show you the uh, depths that Jim Carrey can go to 
as far as changing characters and doing different things with a character or characters and what he can do comedic wise and what he can do in some, in some serious aspects. Yeah, the mask. Yeah, that came out in '94 as well. I can't believe I forgot about that. Yeah. But definitely the mask. Also, the first time I saw Cameron Diaz. Yes. But yeah, that was a good movie too. Like I saw it in the theaters. There's a sequel to that movie that yeah. has Jamie. Can't fucking remember. Jamie Kennedy. Jamie Kennedy. Yeah. It was a piece of shit movie. But, of course, Jim Carrey's mask was better. You know, there was another, there was a comic book, The Mask, and it's based on it, except The Mask, the comic book, is a lot more violent. Right, yeah, yeah. So, I was surprised how somebody said, let's turn this into a movie, but we'll make it more kid-friendly. Yeah. Sort of. But, yeah, basically the movie is about, like, this guy who's a bank teller or yeah. something like that. A bank teller, and he ends up finding this, like, it looks like a African mask, so to speak. But when you put it on, then you become this completely different person altogether and just the things in the movie that he does while wearing the mask is funny. Yeah, for sure. Like, there is one scene where these guys have got Cameron Diaz hostage and there is a bomb beside her and you got Jim Carrey, which looks like a mariachi, mariachi with the sombrero and the outfit. And he, they're shooting at him and he's dancing around and then he goes over to where the bomb is, picks up the bomb, swallows it, just as it's about to go off and it goes off and his stomach goes, ooh, that's one space to meet the ball. Yeah. Er, the another scene is he... He's getting shot at by these guys. He gets shot at a bunch of times. He falls down dead. But then he gets back up and is like accepting like a or like do like a scene of a acceptance speech for like an Academy Award. Yeah. And he's like, they like me. They really like me. And he ends up taking a drink of orange juice I think it is you see it spilling out like holes on them and everything yeah yeah just a really funny funny movie that's a good movie yeah so not we did with our TV shows do we should do maybe an honorable mentions sure so yeah we can talk we talked about sequels all fucking night one movie that I really enjoyed as a kid, and of course, there's two. I don't know about if there's a third one, but Wayne's World. Ah, yes. Mike Myers and Dana Carvey play these rockers, and it's very cool. Like, one movie has Alice Cooper in it. You have Aerosmith in another number two movie. Yes. And Rob Lowe. Is there Tia Carrera and, and just a fun rock and roll movie in general? So, yeah, you know, there's that. Another movie that comes to mind as far as like really funny and also kind of corny and cheesy, but in a way, still really entertaining is Night at the Roxbury. Yeah. So, yeah, it's an adaptation of a Saturday Night Live sketch. Yeah. Of Ralph Farrell and Chris Kattan. And I also saw that in theater. It was a fairly good 
movie, you know, and that's not the first adaptation that has been done, but it's very cool to see those two, we got Molly Shannon in there, and there's Mark McKinney, so a lot of the people from that cast at the time of Saturday Night Live, so yeah. it was very cool, actually. You know, so it, speaking of Mike Myers while we're at it, <laughs> and sequels, Austin Powers. Ah, yes. So I remember I saw all three of them in the theater as well, and I thought they were very funny. I was actually in a hospital at Sick Kids in 2000, and my family came down and decided to do like an Austin Powers movie a thon, I guess. So we had to go yeah. watching that. It was pretty cool. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But yeah. like obviously it's not a, a movie for children. No. But I really enjoyed it, you know. It's again one of those things where you have to tell your kids to like not impersonate yeah. the characters, but you know, you know, fat bastard and the fucking gold member. Yeah. I think he was a key, isn't and, that weird? Yeah. And the different, like, it, well, it's a, it's a spoof on the James Bond movies, so. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed those. What movie that I thought of that I saw? Long time ago, probably the late 90s, I'd say, well, roughly. It's a really good movie, and it's a fairly deep movie, as far as, like, the meaning behind what it's about is... Remember the Titans. Okay. Yeah, it's a movie with... Denzel Washington in it, and he plays this football coach, and he is trying to get these guys to call, I think it's trying to get them to college, and one of the players on the team is played by, oh, I can't remember his name, but he he was a really big guy and then ended up losing a bunch of weight. He's been in a bunch of other movies. Anyways, there's this one football player. He's trying to get like a C or B average to go to school or advanced college or whatever and he ends up getting that average when there's one scene where I think it's the quarterback of the football team ends up dying in an accident or no owner gets injured gets his car or truck whatever gets stuck on train tracks and the train comes along and hits the truck and he ends up in the hospital and all this other stuff but it's a good movie too. Yeah. Oh, well, last one I think I'll bring up is a movie that another Robin Williams movie I think is pretty cool. It's another powerful dramatic role that he's been on. Yeah. And stars Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, you got Manny Driver, Goodwill Hunting. Yes. It's about this kid who's a genius, but he's a real tough little Boston guy and he's basically in the care of Robert Williams who plays the psychiatrist so it's kind of like a back and forth from them and like eventually have a relationship or friendship if you will yeah and you know the one scene that is also Heartbreaking is the it's not your fault scene. Uh -huh. 
and yeah, that, you know, it's very difficult to watch. But yeah. it is a really good movie, and you know, Robin's character also goes through trying to deal with the death of his wife, and I mean, you have to watch it. Yeah, it's also directed by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon too. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Last movie I'll mention and talking about movies that are deep as far as the meaning behind what it's about and what you can learn from the movie. I saw this movie quite a while ago and I found it to be a really good movie just because it gives you an overall general idea of what it's like to be a genius, so to speak, and what somebody that is a genius goes through on like a day-to-day -day life. The movie's called uh, A Beautiful Mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. With uh, Russell Crowe. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. He... Like he plays this like really smart person and nobody can beat him at chess and he's like really good with math and different equations and stuff like that and I don't remember the overall premise of the movie but just the movie itself is really really good. So, this has been a very good episode, two-parter episode, and so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and one of the people that, we, because we did a poll, and basically, that was picked, that yeah. was at least one of the two that was picked, I gotta look again and see if anybody else voted, Yeah, but next week we'll go back to wrestling and we're gonna look back at halloween havoc 1998 which was an okay. interesting one yeah so for me and matt then this is killer kyle yeah but we'll talk to you next week <laughs>